using React query in SPFX solutions, but as you may imagine, as the name suggests, because it's React query, you can use that only in solutions you are using React. So sorry, today, nothing interesting for adaptive cans, only old school development. Two words about myself, I'm Martin. You can find me on social medias if you want. I highly encourage, let's have some discussion about code. What is React Query? React Query is a third party library that will help you with queries in React. By queries, I mostly mean queries to backend API. The whole idea is that usually, if you have experience with React, either functional components or class components, if you do something for SharePoint, you start every class or every functional component the same way. Either use effect and state is loading state obtained data, or you have component did mount, and in component did mount, you call for API, which of course is a lot of repetitive things. And you have to wonder about, oh, how I deal with caching, how, how I will deal with concurrent requests to the same, uh, the same endpoint. And all of that magic, which someone extremely smart abstracted into one third party library. Before we move forward, because you can see it provides hooks for communication with backend API. The question is, what are the glorious hooks? And effectively, React hooks are a feature that React introduced, I believe, with React 16.8 to help you manage component state. The biggest issue with, uh, with such approach, with, with hooks, it, it requires binding, binding context. So also, I believe, since React 16.8, uh, in React 16.8, uh, React in, uh, introduced something like React Context, which can help you register your common dependencies, functionalities, and all of that magic so you can share it across other components. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best way forward. This is an open question. Also, I believe this is Important to note here that usually when I present something on such calls, I can very confidently say that it will scale. This is a great solution. If you want, go for it. Uh, this, this time, I didn't test it enough in big scale to confidently say this will not break. It's definitely a concept worth playing around with, but approach with cautious. Having said that, why would we use that? I mentioned a little bit of that before. It, it has beautiful uh, handling of retry policies, error, caching, concurrency. Also, it has amazing support for something called state requests, which I hope I will not forget to show. It simplifies the development quite a lot because, as you will see in a moment uh, in the demo, you have only one hook per functionality. Uh, and by that, it also improves a little bit uh, state management for common requests. And I believe the most common requests are request used for users because when you render news at the bottom, you usually want to render who created it. When you render items created by, modified by, events who created. So the endpoints related to users are very commonly uh, used all across your application. And it is a at least in my experience, quite common issue that all of them are calling the same endpoint, but separately, and you just duplicate the uh, network throughput. So how to approach that at high level? As I mentioned, we would need something called context provider. To that context provider, would have to provide or pass HTTP client. Uh, and this is a little bit of important point. Usually, it requires authentication as a service dependency. And this would be very often async operation. So you cannot just create, create this uh, without any context. I will go into more details about this during demo. Once we will have our HTTP client, we go with uh, wrapper around our original component with context provider. So we can provide context for our uh, provider. So that we can provide context for our component. Then we implement the hook that is returning use square method. And use square method is the beef of our today's uh, or my today's uh, demo. Use square is that lovely method from React Query library. 
Finally, we consume that in child components or in our root component, whenever we like, as long as it's below context provided. Then the last step is enjoy and pure enjoyment of nice and simple solution for a complex problem. Having said that, let's take a look at our demo. OK, so first of all, because that's the lovely demo, you can see I have a SPFX web part with one, two, three, four user cards. Those are new your custom user cards will go in a second. But first of all, I wanted to show you that uh, state functionality. Because React Query will automatically detect if you have some state request, I have opened this page for about four hours. And you can see that every now and then when it detects staleness, it calls React, not React, but Graph to get new data about users. So this is how our web part looks like. Nothing too fancy, but as always, the devil is in the details. Let's go from the top. Our React query sample, our web part. In our web part, we have render. And as I said previously, we have our out, almost out of the box uh, component. And instead of rendering it and passing it here to React DOM render, we create app context where we provide our graph client and our created element. Then we use React DOM to render our component. So this is the easiest way to provide context to our component. And here on init, I initialize that graph client. I don't want to go too, into too much details about it, but I promise to you will see that await on init is async. So here we can actually await the uh, authentic authentication magic, which is lovely. Now let's discuss what that context provider is actually, actually is, what context provider actually is. In context provider, as, uh, as I've uh, shown, Seconds ago, we provide that magical graph client. Our graph client is simple uh, HTTP client, nothing to worry about here. But this query client, which as you can see is query client imported from React Query, here we can define some interesting things like stale time, cache time, retry policy. Again, don't want to go too much into details about it because we're short on time, but effectively that's it. Now the Use, uh, use user query, which returns use query, again, use query from React query. Here you can see we actually bind together a few requests. We are batching it into one, and we are returning the user object. Now I mentioned that it will automatically handle concurrency, which I believe is the most important, because if we go to React query sample, you can see we have four different users. For, for, for different components, but all of those components are actually using the same use user query. Here in another user, here in component with nested user, and here in the simplest user, we every time we use only this use query method, and this handles all of that concurrency. So either we are rendering four elements or four components on our page, we're actually calling only uh, we are calling the endpoint only once. On that, because skin listener could uh, say, but Martin, you're usually talking about unit tests and how you can unit test stuff when there is this big um, context provider dependency. Two ways around it. First of all, we can provide actually the whole context and in our to our context provider, just uh, pass mocked graph client or which is even better for the isolation testing, using just mock, you can actually um, mock the whole hook itself. So then for our uh, for our test, you will just render the user as you would render it anywhere else. You will just uh, don't have, you will remove during the runtime dependency to context because you are mocking hook as a whole. On that note, I hope that's enough. If there are any questions, I would love to talk about it, ping me. But I will leave some time for the next presenter. Have a lovely evening. See you soon. Super demo, Martin. Thanks.